Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing nitric oxide synthase inhibitors. Now, I need to make a correction to what I said in the previous video. I was drawing the correct thing here. I wa it, This methyl group is on this other nitrogen here, this amino group here, and it's not on this guanadino nitrogen. Now, I now need to explain to you why the notation, therefore, um, why the notation lists this as NG monomethyl L arginine when this methyl group hasn't been added apparently, well, apparently hasn't been added to the uh, guanadino nitrogen. And it's because the structure resonates, basically. So in the structure of arginine, let's look at the structure of arginine up here, um, where, let me draw this amino group here as it fully would be. Okay, like so. What often happens is that this double bond will oscillate between being a double bond uh, with this nitrogen and being a single bond with this nitrogen and being a single bond with this nitrogen and being a double bond with this nitrogen here. So there's an oscillation between whether this double bond is between this carbon and this nitrogen or this carbon and this nitrogen. Uh, that's known as a resonant structure. Okay, so... Uh, it's not really correct to say this one's the guanadino nitrogen and this one's not. They're both guanadino nitrogens uh, because they're both flitting in between this state. And you might say, well, uh, this nitrogen here, it's got two hydrogens stuck on it. How can it form a double bond with the carbon? Well, what you find generally is that um, this nitrogen here, which has the double bond at the moment, it has a lone pair of electrons here, and what it will often do is it will pick up a proton here. So protons will sort of interact with this uh, nitrogen here anyway. So this nitrogen, even though it's got this double bond with the carbon, will actually um, will actually have four bonds, or, well, four groups around it anyway. So flipping between this one having the double bond and this one having the double bond really makes no difference. So in effect, they're both guanadino nitrogens. Okay, so that's why uh, LNMMA, um, which is NG monomethyl L arginine, is often drawn with this uh, methyl group off this nitrogen here. Uh, in a sense, my structure before wasn't wrong because, as I say, they'll be flipping between each other, so this one may well become the double bond structure here. Um, but in um, if you Google it, certainly you will see this structure uh, where the methyl is off the nitrogen uh, that is um, has not currently got the double bond. Okay, but as I say, they'll flip between this one having the double bond and this one having a single bond, and then the other way around, this one having a single bond and this one having a double bond. Okay, so now uh, let's turn our attention to another, uh, another uh, NOS inhibitor. Okay, and this next NOS inhibitor is by the name of NG, NG Nitro, L-arginine methyl ester. L-arginine methyl ester. Okay, so methyl ester. And uh, this one has quite nice initials. Well, if you pick them selectively, you take the N from here. So N. You t well, first you put the L out the front. So this L comes out the front. Then you take the N. You take the A for arginine. You take the M for methyl, and you take the E for ester, and you get L name. Okay, so let me show you the structure of L name. And again, it has a analogous structure to, um, to arginine. Okay, right. So, um, it's pretty much got the same structure as uh, L nitro arginine, which we saw in the uh, previous video. So let me firstly draw out L nitro arginine. So, if this is the alpha carbon here, okay, here's the amino group of our amino acid. And I won't yet draw the carboxylic acid group because that's going to have um, a, a modification to it in this molecule. So, here is the R group at the moment. So, here are these free methylene groups, like so. Okay. And then afterwards, what we have is this nitrogen atom here. 
and then a carbon, and then this carbon has a double bond to a nitrogen down here, um, and then we'll have it in currently with this state with this single bond with this nitrogen and the hydrogen, and then you'll have this nitro group off here, okay, like so, O minus here, plus. Okay, and that's why we put NG nitro L arginine to denote that this nitro is off the guanadino nitrogen. And as I just explained to you, these the sense in calling both of these two the guanadino nitrogen uh, because it's it just it, they they will be resonating between uh, having this title basically having this double bond with the carbon. Okay, so at the moment, that would be ng nitro l arginine if I just put this carboxylic acid group here. But we don't want ng uh, l arginine. We now want the methyl ester of that. And that means that you basically put, uh, you esterify the carboxylic acid group with uh, methanol uh, to get this structure. So this now is the structure of NG nitro L arginine methyl ester or L name. Okay. Now L name again like L N M M A and um, L nitro arginine is uh, not very selective between the different isoforms of the NOS enzyme. However, it is just like L nitro arginine, it is slightly selective for NOS free. So, slightly selective for NOS free over the other two isoforms, but, um, but it will um, inhibit all free basically, slightly for NOS free. Okay, right, slightly, I should have selective in between there. Slightly selective for NOS free. Okay, right. Uh, so there's uh, L name. Now we can move on to some more uh, selective variants of these because these three were really the non-selective ones: L and M M A, L uh, nitro arginine, and L name. They are the uh, non-selective NOS uh, inhibitors. Now we're going to move on to uh, a selective NOS inhibitor now. And this one's got an interesting story because it's not selective because the chemical will actually only bind to the drug, uh, to that enzyme. Instead, it's selective because it's selectively taken up into neurons. And this is 7-nitroindazole, okay? Or it's often abbreviated to 7-ni. So 7-ni stands for 7-nitroindazole. Okay, so let me uh, show you the structure of 7-nitroindazole. So you have this benzene ring here, Okay, so this is benzene, and I'll draw the alternating single and double bonds. I'm drawing its skeletal structure so that I don't have to draw the carbons. Okay, and then off this benzene, to create an indazole ring, what you have to do is you have, uh, it's two rings basically. It's benzene uh, with a uh, pentagon, well a five-membered ring here, and in this indazole ring, you have two nitrogen atoms, one here and one here, and those are connected by a single bond there. Okay, so off this nitrogen, you then have a hydrogen. So everything else, all these other corners, they are carbons, and wherever there are missing bonds off the carbons, those are just implicitly assumed to be, um, to be um, hydrogens, basically. Now what you have to do is stick a nitro group off here. So you have this nitrogen here, double bonded to an oxygen, and a singly bonded to another oxygen, and remember I told you how this works. This nitrogen donates one of its electrons in the lone pair to the oxygen, and then those two electrons come together to form a covalent bond. But that still means that the oxygen has a negative charge and the nitrogen has a positive charge. So this is the structure of 7 nitro indazole. Now, if you were to mix this 7 nitro indazole uh, with uh, NOS1, it would inhibit it. If you were to mix it with NOS2, it would inhibit it. If you were to mix it with NOS3, it would inhibit it. So why do we say that 7 nitro indazole is selective for neuronal NOS? Well, the reason is that 7 nitro indazole is selectively taken up into neurons. So neurons basically take this drug up really well. So if I draw a neuron here, 
Okay, so here's our neuron. Then this drug is taken up into neurons, and that is why we say it's selective for NNOS. It's not because it actually is selective for that isoform of nitric oxide synthase. It's because it is selectively taken up into neurons, and then it will inhibit whatever NOS is in the neurons. And the main NOS in neurons is neuronal NOS, N-NOS, so it's going to inhibit the N-NOS. So it's not selective because it actually is selective for that isoform over the others. It's selective because it will be uh, in the vicinity of that isoform and not in the vicinity of the other isoforms. Okay, right, uh, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.